train out from 16, try. themselves writers because that's what they do they write their names among other things everywhere names they've been given or have chosen for themselves most of all they write in and on subway trains which carry their names from one end of the city to the other it's called bombing and it has equally assertive counterparts in rap music and break dancing Graffiti writing in New York is a vocation. Its traditions are handed down from one youthful generation to the next. To some, it's art. To most people, however, it is a plague that never ends. A symbol that we've lost control. I'm Detective Bernie Jacob. I, in conjunction with my partner, Detective Jim McHugh, are the crime prevention coordinators for the New York City Transit Police Department. Graffiti, as the name itself, is not an art. Graffiti is the application of a medium to a surface. I will show you graffiti, such as the letters on the end of that car directly in back of me. Is that an art form? I don't know. I'm not an art cr critic. But I can sure as hell tell you that that's a crime. At the Grand Concourse, 149th Street Station in the Bronx, graffiti writers gather at what they call the writer's bench. They're saying that the kids run the subways, that the system is out of control, that 15 and 16 year old kids are running the system, and that graffiti is a symbol of that. No, I ain't running the system. Hell yeah. I'm bombing the system. <laughs> They're trying to make it look like graffiti riders break windows and everything. It ain't even like that. You know who be doing that, man? Niggas who be high when they come from school right. is the ones who break the windows. And it's in the graffiti artist's favor to be as cool, calm, and collected about putting his art on the train as he can. You know, he wants to get in and get out without even being noticed, except for the work that's going to come out to the public that, you know, that Monday. Yeah, we gotta start to rock some straight lit it. This one came out of right, right? That's, you know, Yeah, that's the first, that's about the third skiing piece I did this year. And that's the TikTok I did in Gun Hill. What'd you do last night? We did um, two whole cars. It was me, Dez, and me three, right? And on the first car, in small letters, it said, all you see is, and then, you know, big, big, you know, block silver letters that said crime in the city, right? It just took up the whole yeah, car. Yeah, it, it was a whole car and shit. Then it was a, you know, a scroll like, you no know, one of those scrolls. Then on the next car, it was a scheme that had, you know, a cop character, you know, a police nigga with, with a stick, you know, in a bag. What, what design did you put around the Society car? should go down in the subway and lock them all up because they don't have any business down there. It is dangerous down there. People that work down there 25 and 30 years have accidents. 
but his contention is that he's immortal, I guess, like most 17-year-olds are immortal. Right? Well, it's a matter of getting a tag on each line and each division. You know, you go, it's called going all city. People see your tags in Queens, uptown, downtown, all over. <laughs> I can only, I really, I can only laugh to keep from crying because what happens is he really, I, I don't really think he, he knows how silly that sounds. He's going all city. I mean, to what end? And when I ask him, he says to me, well, just so people see it and they know who I am. Somebody knows who he is, and so they see it, and so No, what? it's not a matter of so they know who I am. So they see it, and then after they see it, so what? It's a matter of bombing, knowing that I can do it, you know? Every time I get in the train, almost every day I see my name. I say, yeah, you know what? I was there. I bombed it. It's a matter. It's for me. It's not for nobody else to see. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care about nobody else seeing it or the fact if they can read it or not. It's for me and other graffiti writers that we can read it. All these other people who don't write, they're excluded. I don't care about them. No, they don't matter to me. It's for us. CC starboard bound. Slow it down. Slow it down. What is it? You tell me. Nice and slow. Nice and slow. This is it. This is it. This is it. This is it. In the 1970s, New York graffiti, rapping, and breaking became the prime expressions of a new young people subculture called hip-hop. Graffiti is the written word. There's the spoken word of rap music. And then there's the acrobatic body language of dances, like breaking. It started in the Bronx and part of Harlem. It started in Freeze's house. Oh, shut up! His mom used to break. She's a whole act in his own. Don't be talking about my mother now. Well, yeah, Billy, go, go, go. Mom used to spin on her head like my mother. Boy, you acting stupid now. Break is when you don't have nothing to do and, you know, everybody just stand around getting high. Just for you. You can make up your own freezes. You got names. And you call them and you got names for them. Like the baby. It's a baby. Chair. A dead freeze like this. Well, that's one of the old, old ancient. It ain't one of the old, because I was one. <laughs> I was the first one to do it. How ancient can you get? The one when you go like this? It's called the hump. It's called the, the hump. Man, the headache works. No, that's the headache. That's the headache. And the other one is the hump. You got a headache. Oh, you can, you can when you got a headache, when you got a headache, you go like that, you know. When you hump, you go like that. <laughs> This is the transit system. They don't like it to be defaced, and they will at times try and uh, go to the extreme and try and apprehend you. The subway system is a very old one, and I've personally explored some tunnels, and I've found rooms where maps that were so old it was, might have been like the first train line that New York City had. Well, what do you want? Just a lot of rock, a lot of steel, tomb, dungeon, under, under the city. A lot of trains, a lot of fun, a lot of art. Art that's going to be a part of New York City's history forever. Oh, wow, check it out, a whole car lit. Yo, what? Check it out, man, the statue. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at that. 
lot of riders have been down here, you can tell. Graffiti all over the place. Years ago, it was pretty much a secret. It was secretly done. People wondered and wished they could do it. Now most people do it. When all the toys are like home sleeping, cuddling to their pillows, they usually have curfews. Come down in the wee hours of the night after the work has done their job, the sweepers did the sweeping they had to do. Just take my time and be creative. I think it's something you can never really capture again once you experience it. You have like live third rails and like crazy cops who, who come and chase you out. Even the smell you get, like when you first smell trains, like in a yard, is like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good smell to like a dedicated graffiti writer, I guess. first against the train, it's like, everything seems so big, like, wow, it's like you're in a yard of, like, metal giants, and, like, you're just, like, I mean, everything is, like, so hard and, like, so steel, and, like, you're just there, you're like a little dude, you're, like, in the midst of all this metal, and, like, you're here to produce something, you know, well, you're here to, like, try to produce something. I've seen comparable uh, graffiti, not necessarily these particular ones. Each of these cost us a million dollars, in a sense, because uh, others went out and uh, tried to uh, copy. Isn't it worth it? Well, it is one of the quality of life offenses, and uh, you can't just take one of those quality of life offenses. It's like uh, three-card Monty and uh, pickpocketing and uh, shoplifting and uh, uh, graffiti defacing our uh, public and private walls. Uh, they're all in the same uh, area of uh, destroying our uh, lifestyle and making it uh, difficult to enjoy uh, life, and I think uh, has to be responded to. And so I've told you uh, that the response that I think a repeater, three-time repeater, should get would be five days in jail. Now, obviously, a murderer, you, if you believe in the death penalty as I do, you want to have the option of executing a murderer. You wouldn't do that to a graffiti writer. They saw you at work over here. I just want to find out what you're filming. Well, we're making a film on subway graffiti in New York. Well, why did you take uh, this particular neighborhood here? What's uh, unusual? More graffiti here than other places? I hope not. We're here because one of the one of the best graffiti writers lives around here. Right scene. What is it? S E E N. That's his name. Yes, that's what he or writes. Or is it a that's nom de plume? It's a, it's a nom de plume. You wouldn't tell me he's in the real name. No. Why not? Would he be in getting in trouble or wouldn't he be glorified by it? Oh, and I'm the type of guy who will never settle down. reasons why I ain't paint right now. To make a long story short, I'm on what they call a six-month probation. They call it a six-month vacation. Never mind probation. Now they got a graffiti squad on this line, which they really was never really. Since they come on the line, it's been harder to piece, and it, it ain't like the old days when a train used to pull into the yard on a Friday night. That train wouldn't pull out until Monday morning. Now when you go to piece of train, you put an outline on the train and you can say goodbye. The train pulls out and 10 minutes later. Or if you're ready to put an outline, you got to chase the train halfway down the track to put an outline on the piece. It just ain't the same anymore. They don't know what they're doing no more. Late, as usual, 
But I'm here. I show up, though. I show up. Let me see. Well, why don't you do this one, this one, on that side of the wall? You know what I'm saying? No. This one. I, we want. We got our plane room. Believe me. The bottom of the piece. The bottom of the piece. I say about here. All right. The United States is going to go a little bit below the top because we're going to have it on a wave. You know what I mean? It's going to yeah. be big delays. So I want you to start from about here. All right. Maybe even here. Start it from here. Listen to me. From here. You understand what I'm saying here? I still think it's too big. Now, your first outline is needed. Always needed. This way you know what you're filling in. No matter how good you are, you can't just go in and just start filling in in the air. You gotta have your first outline. Once your first outline is done, then you're filling. That takes away your first outline, meaning you don't need your first no more because now you got your filling. From your filling, you put your colors and then your 3D. And if you want background, you put your cloud or whatever. How's this thing? I'm throwing a few connections here. I wanna make it look like yours. What do you think? I'll make a few bits. All right. Huh? Bits, bits. I don't know, little doodads here and there. Yeah, that, now it's shaping up. I have about 100 outlines, but I'm shaping up. Nikki, Nikki, come on. You gonna save me room or what? I didn't do that to yours. Get out of there. Please. Come on. You're making a mess in this house. You cannot sit down without you're not doing graffiti or something. All right, when you, you really can't. When you're talking on the phone, and you're talking on the phone, you don't doodle on the paper? I don't doodle. Yes, you do. I do not doodle. You do doodle on the paper. I don't doodle. I don't doodle. I just write my name while I'm talking on the phone. What's that? It's just, Bethel, you're I'm just me, writing something. You're telling me that you write your name while you're talking on the phone. In the meantime, you have destroyed your room. You have destroyed your room. Testing out my You paint. have no respect for anything. Don't tell me about testing out your paint. You have no respect for anything anymore. Ain't we putting red, yellow, and up, red, orange, and yellow in the air? No, the browns got to be brown. I ain't putting no browns there. Ain't no way. Red, orange, and yellow. You want it to and stand out. Top, Boom. Top, the top. whole thing around the whole works. Red, orange, and yellow. Remember how I did the mad scene with the wall and the color went all around the thing? The mad scene went on the five. With the walls were falling down, the one I did it myself? No. All right, let me explain. Yellow, orange, and a little bit of red. So yellow and orange around the whole thing, and then we'll put browns and beiges in the 3D. Believe me, I'll show you. Not around the face. Fade into the yard, but a trim of red, a cheap trim. I'll show you after. I'll show you after. All right? I'll never steer you wrong, Nick. Rustoleum, Krylon, wet look, epoxy, red devil. When you hold a can of Rustoleum in your hand, it's like holding three other shit brands in your hand. It lasts, it covers, and it's not aerosol like Krylon. It just comes out in the mist. It just comes out like paint. The schools uh, have uh, courses in art. How about the mothers and fathers uh, of this uh, city saying to the kids, that's the wrong thing to do. You listen to them talk, they sound absolutely ridiculous. He's the king of the yakety yak yard. Uh, who died and left him king of any yard? He owns nothing in the subway, you know? <laughs> I love robbing paint. I know, you know, everybody knows how you rob it. And, like, he gets me souped up, and sometimes I'll go and get 15 cans at a time, you know, stuffing it in your coat, in your shirt, down the back of your pants. It's mainly with a big coat and, like, 15 cans, you figure it out, it's like over $50. You're going into stores, like I, we could go one day and get 100 cans at a time. It's easy, for me anyway. It's, you know, harder on black kids or Spanish kids, because like everybody thinks a graffiti writer is black and Puerto Rican, and that's like, you know, uh, it's wrong, you know. A lot of white people are writing. What you've got is uh, a whole miserable subculture. I was raised on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. I went to a sort of strict prep school in the Bronx, right, Riverdale Country School. In attending that school, I had to walk past the one yard on 242nd Street every day. From where I stood, I'd watch the trains pull in and out. I thought, how could a human being have his name on every car? You know, that these guys must either live in there, be allowed to live in there, 
or just be like allowed to you know go off like that right they're trespassing it they're beating the system they're getting their names up right we've drenched the city with our names right we're trying our damnedest Freshly painted double R, and we spent about three hours in it. That's impossible. No, it's not. We, we were tagging with the unis, then the minis, then the Marvies, then the pilots, then the flow pens, and we were doing clouds around the tags and 3Ds on the tags. We just, for the double R's to have a clean car back then like that, it was, we just had an orgasm. 1970. The idea of getting your name up, not just in your neighborhood, but everywhere, was invented by a kid named Taki, who lived on 183rd Street in Washington Heights. Taki 183. As soon as everybody understood that it was a name, they realized that Taki was famous. Taki 183 was the first guy, even though they say Julio Teofor started before him. But he was the one that made it famous. Then after him, in them times, was Papa 184. Then came out Junior 161. K-161, they, they were bombing too. Stitch came out around 1971, he was all 32. Barbara, Eva, 62, they were girls. Everybody was right. Oh, that was what everybody was talking in them days. Somebody say, get up, get up. Somebody say, get up, get up. I got into graffiti just like riding the trains when I was younger, you know, looking at, you know, old writers shit, you know? Like a lot of new writers around, like they, you know, you talk to them about a lot of old writers, see, they don't even know what you're talking about. I started in 1973 or 4, uh, during very uh, early years of uh, initial bombing, very important years of graffiti bombing, because if it wasn't for those years, I don't think we would get where we are today. That was the life back then. That was, that was happening. Everybody was pioneering back then. That's when all the developing happened, your bubble letters, all that kind of stuff, your, your wild styles. <laughs> Wild styles. Yeah, you, you don't have to do straight letters to have style. Anything that comes in your imagination adds on to your own individual style. The arrow. Everybody's got their own arrow. I like that though. Various arrows. Some guys have on the letter arrow. That was like connection. Some people had different arrows just going right through their pieces. The funk is here, so you can move. We want to make your body move. Bum, 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 me up. Color, design, style, technical, just get loose. Get loose. Cartoons, everything. And when they see you got a vicious style, they be wanting to get loose about it, knowing that's what keep it and going. Right, yeah, keep it. You know, I know a lot of good writers, you know, and all the writers that I knew, you know, they used to get up, so they used to tell me, your trap, won't you get up? And I started getting up with them. And we started doing pieces. Then I met Dez, so and then... One day, you know, I came to the bench, and I seen them sitting there looking at the pieces. You could tell a writer, you know, like you go to the bench and you see him as the trains go by, he'll be going like this. You know, he have ink stains on his clothes. He gave me outlines and stuff like that to practice. I can't let him go for at least five minutes, you know, or he'll destroy the piece. <laughs> you know, I, I turn around, chat, what you doing, you know? I want to do my own piece. I said, yeah, but you know, follow the outline. 
Russ, Russ. What's up, man? I you know I'm chilling, man. Slag Rex, Slag Rex, and the A's and B. For about two and a half years, I was upstate. From like beginning of 1970 to 72. What's up? Yeah, what's up? When I came home, I ain't know nothing about no white, no graffiti, cause I wasn't about it. All right, all right. You know it. What's up, man? So when I got home, I seen writing on the train. I said, what's this stuff here, you know? Cause niggas doing their names big. I said, let me do one at least, you know, because I was, you know, down with art already. And I did me a piece, just, you know, for people in general to get to know who I am. I said, ooh, that look all right. Well, I'm going to go every Sunday now. Next thing I know, I started getting better and better. And as I realized I knew to get better, I said, oh, man, I'm going to bring out the computer rock. And then that's when I really got loose, because then niggas are saying, yo, who's that guy? Then one day, these news reporter people was on the train station. They, we was going by, and we seen them. We seen them filming our whole car. We went up to them, and I remember I said, yo, who you think probably done that right there? You know, just to be curious to see what they say. And he said, I don't know, but whoever done it, that's some remarkable talent, you know? I ain't never seen nothing like this before. I said, if I told you I did it, would you believe me? He said, I don't know. I can't say, but I believe so, because you don't never know what you can believe these days. So I said, well, I did. And then he said, I don't believe that. You only got one arm. I said, that don't mean nothing. I do things that people don't realize I can do with this, but, you know, being that I'm like this, you know? And then he said, I hear you then, Sonny. And then I said, well, I ain't no Sonny now. I just was asking a question, so, you know, so that's all I wanted to know, to see how your feelings was about it. Do you want it then? So, get some candy? Huh? Can't get none? Wait up. Get some candy, man. You ain't got no chance? Oh. Hey, Jiggle O, what's your name? Jiggle O, where that nigga at, man? Yeah, 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 I can dig it. You're going on the other side, right? Word. Oh, Yo, what up, what up, what up, Jiggle O, what up? The peace master. Do right. you want to swear? Right look, I want to take a chance. Ha, 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 ha. Instead of that eye, it's just Yeah, eye. word. Look at that eagle. No, word. That's the look at the eye. It's like his eye. <laughs> you know where he got that from, right? Von Golden who? Frank yeah. Rosetta. Peace master. The way the letters is the breaking epic up. Epic adventures of a new kind of hero. That's where we're going to be. The fresh extraterrestrial brothers. You know what I'm saying? As to less, knowing we're the best. You know what I'm saying? It's the Desi Des and the Casey Case, the D5. We gonna rock the place. And if you're based in the place, you will get disgraced because we are the crew. We got the place. Rock, shock it, rock, get in the pocket. Rock, shock it, rock, get in the pocket. Say, what that girl front up train? Took it to the doctor, so I'm on again. Stabbed that man right in his heart. Gave him a trash left for a brand new start. Cat cut through the park. Cause it's crazy after dark. Keep my hand on my gun, cause they got me on the run. I feel like an outlaw. Broke my last glass jaw. Hear them say, You want some more? Living on a seesaw. <laughs> And on the stage, you know they just don't care I can't take the smell, can't take the noise Got no money to move out, I guess I got no choice Rats in the front room, roaches in the back Junkies in the alley with the baseball bat I tried to get away, but I couldn't get far Cause a man with the touch of repossessed my car Don't push me, cause I'm close to the edge I'm trying not to lose my head <laughs> well, I know one thing about graffiti, man Niggas say it played out, niggas say this, niggas say that. But it's gonna keep going on, you know? Cause look, I might be old and quit, you know, but you coming up, younger niggas is coming up, it's gonna keep going and keep going, you know? So you gonna be a king soon too, you know?
He's like a son to me in a way, you know. I look out for him. He looks out for me. You know, I won't let nothing happen to him, you know. You know, he won't let nothing happen to me if he could help it, you know. <laughs> so I know from his age, he's 14 now, you know, and I'm 16. By the time he get my age, he'll be like one of the best people out, you know. And if he continues to go on in the years, he could be another Picasso. <laughs> Get funky in the place. Get funky in the place. Life ain't no more joke, it's a serious thing. When you're dealing with the answers that we can't explain. It's the funky beat, and it's the funky beat, and it's the funk, the funk, and it's the funky beat. Yeah. Like a little jelly bean, I'm a sweet like a candy cane. Make you get down. The idea of style and competing for the best style is the key to all forms of rocking. For the rap MC, it's rocking the mic. For the b-boys, it's rocking your body and breakdancing. Or for writers, rocking the city with your name on a train. Get funky in the place. Get funky in the place. Right now he's doing the, the footwork with um, the original breaking came out. Yeah, he's doing the baby and the turtle. The back bridge. Yeah, did the head spin and then just went up. I got a certain maxim that I made up. Want me to show you it? I started off doing like this. I landed like that. All right. So then I just decided not to do the freeze and keep on spinning. So it goes like this. I put my arm right here, and it's easy. And I push with my arm and swing my left leg to my, my right leg, both of them around. Other crews, they're not as good as us, you know, because we have the breaking form, you know, the original break, style. Yeah, original Both style, guys you know. The floor, original. Other, other crews like Dynamic Rockers, you know, they bite usually. Yeah, they're not they as bite. They, they, let me they, tell you about these people. Dynamic Rockers. Back. When I used to go out to the road scene, United States of America and Queens, right? I used to go over there to break against all of them and take them all out, you know, burn them, make them look stupid. I mean, they had no kind of style at all. It was beginners. And I've been breaking way before them. We started doing better routines than they were. They got to a point where they got mad at us because we was taking them out with our moves. And, and then that started getting out of hand because they had the crowd and we didn't. Yo, whoever ain't in rock steady or dynamic, get behind the barriers. Yo, all rock crews, can you please listen? Yo, nobody's listening to me. We're not going to start until you move. Rockers, get ready. Yeah. It's just like humiliating, you know, doing things in people's face and all that. And down rocking is, you know, trying to see who can compete against whose moves on the floor. I was looking at a winner on a straight straight floor. All of a sudden, there was a knock on my door. It was sort of saying, oh, where the fuck fall? Then it threw a hole straight through my door. So I went to the back to get the gun. I was out, two bullets had only one. I shoot the shit. Yeah, shot him in his eye. Never saw a white man jump so high. So who won, who won the rocking contest? <laughs> 
you took them out, right? Put it I, this way, we're out of sight and they bite you. They bit, they bit my turtle into they a hot. Oh, Niggas oh is biting man, into their I could have cried when I seen it. Oh, you know that faggot that was yo, flying man, around there? Yeah, yeah, with his funny legs and shit? Yeah, yo, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yo, man. Yeah, yeah, so he's so gotta be in So what? So what? That's not even breaking, man. That's know, all fairy flying. I call that fairy flying. Who goes for Rocksteady? I write the graffiti. I tell her, I say, I'm going up on the train, so I'm going to go write some graffiti. Yeah. She says, if uh, cops call, don't come running to me. Um, I, I never realized they, they, it meant so much to them, you know? I just thought they were writing, just writing anything. But I guess it has a deep meaning. Huh? What kind of deep meaning? Um, well, like he said, uh, he's writing his girlfriend's names and... He's dust, whatever that means. <laughs> what is dust supposed no, to mean? It's just the name, it's a word, you know. If I see it's a game, it's like they give you a name and they say, here, take this name and do something with it. Like he got the name seen, he can walk around and just say, hey, my name is seen. And I'll say, yeah, yeah, I see you right there, I see you there. It's a name, it's just like I'll give you a name and you say, hey, how big could you get this name up? How high? Trains are routinely washed, but because of the graffiti problem, we have to use a graffiti removal solution, which at best is detrimental to the physical makeup of the train itself. This is what I'm assigning. The car wash. 8 a.m. to make the yard. Hold your nose. We spend a lot of money replacing broken and damaged side windows. We cannot use acrylic plastic windows in the train because the same graffiti removal solution fogs the windows. The problem often is that often it doesn't produce a sparkling clean car, but rather a uh, sort, of, sort of vomitous color, uh, which is, is uh, some of the graffiti artists argue less attractive than what they consider to be their artwork. So it's altogether sort of an unsatisfactory result. Watch out, you might get wet. Watch your shoes. It's not the best smelling stuff, but so far it hasn't hurt. You know, it hasn't uh, bothered me. Some fellas are bothered. <coughs> that's my money that's being diverted from providing me with good, safe, secure, rapid transit. Look at this, Chuck. Graffiti doesn't make your life better. It just makes your neighborhood look worse. You know how I made something out of my life? By using my hands. But only in the rain. Don't use them to mess up the walls with graffiti. I practiced all my life to make moves like that. And I worked every day to be a singer. So if you really want to make something out of your life, use your hands. Or your voice. But don't waste your time making a mess. Make your mark in society, not on society. This happens to be a poster that is uh, the first in a series that's going to be used in New York City subways and buses, where we've used Hector Camacho, who's a boxer, North American lightweight champ, and Alex Ramos, boxer, leading middleweight contender. Take it from the champs. Graffiti is for chumps. Make your mark in society, not on society. That's really very clever. Uh, put your mark on society in uh, in uh, doing something in society. I've screwed it up a little bit, but nevertheless, you got the message. Realistically, you think it's... <coughs> well,
Well, you say realistically. I'm hopeful that it will uh, work. Nobody uh, thought that we would be as successful as we were in the uh, campaign against the drought and water conservation. Nevertheless, if that worked, I'm hopeful we will have equal success here. Time will tell. Mr. Mayor, are those posters graffiti-proof? Uh, Time uh, will tell. <laughs> What you doing, B? Fresh? Yeah, fresh. one of my little signature series guns. Word. Lord, son, you getting fresh on a nigga, man. That nigga still got the touch, boy. Butch and Butch with the tiger skin. I see you did the cage with the seats this time. Yeah, well, you know who I am, though, anyway. You know the king of what? King of style. Shoot, I got styles already that's more complex that nobody know about. I mean, super duty tough work. <laughs> See, this is just semi like what I would call it. But if I really get into it and start camouflaging it, I don't think you even be able to read it. Don't go nowhere. Little, little semi thing here. It wasn't no severely bad accident. It's just that I got burnt by wires. That's all. A long time ago. Electrical wires, and then they rushed me to the hospital, and they just had to amputate because my tissues and muscles was burnt bad. You know, I was young, I was playing, and I, I wasn't you know, too sure on what I was. I knew what I was doing, but I just didn't know not should I grab a wire or not. And I don't know if I grabbed it or not, but I know I just, you know, got hurt because it had knocked me out, so I didn't remember, you know. But it don't mean nothing in general. I mean. I'm okay. It's just that it was a bad thing to happen at the time, you know? But you that's why people's amazed about me now, because of going through that and then dealing with what I'm dealing with, even though it's common, literally bull crap in a way, you know? People look at a person, what? You ran on trains? Are you vandalism and all that? Yeah, I'm vandalism, all right, but still in general, I know what I'm doing. I did something to make your eyes open up, right? So why is you talking about it for, you know? This is a beautiful spot to do pieces on. And ain't hardly no riders know about this place. My spot. Niggas know, believe it. Niggas know. <laughs> Yo, here, take the cans. I am not a graffiti artist. I'm a graffiti bomber. There's two styles of graffiti that are trying to, you know, coexist with each other, but it ain't gonna work like that. Blood wars, buddy. Blood wars. That's why graffiti's ruined. Like, Cap ruined the twos and fives. The twos and fives used to go to the two yard. It would be like a masterpiece art gallery of burners from all these dudes from the Bronx and Brooklyn with Death Wild styles. Now you go to the two yard, it's, it's all destroyed. This guy named Cap with his Lucille Ball hairdo. <laughs> all your burners. <laughs> What's up, Sal? Yeah, what's up, man? I've seen your new pieces, man, on the twos and five. Yeah. Like, they went over that, that shine, man. Yeah, I know. Cap. Cap. Yeah, I wouldn't mind if you would have went over one of my old cars, you know, but that was fresh. It was a brand new burner. It only ran for two days, you know? He and he didn't even get a chance to run on the line, just like, Not even you know, and they went over, and I feel, you know, that hurt me, you know. And Seen was with him, and PJ. And then I called Seen up, and he denied it. I can't afford to get involved. There's a war going on, as you should know. PJ and Cap, against everybody. You just crossed me out anyway, so I don't know why, but brand new car, too, he wasted. Let's say this. I stand behind them if they had a good cause for the situation. As far as it is now, 
they have no cause behind it. They're just doing it for the hell of it, which that ain't me because I wouldn't want people to go over my pieces so I wouldn't go over them. He's disrespecting the line, which no other guy was doing that years ago. All he does is silver throws. You got fresh colored pieces full of top of bottles. No, you can't get him back. You can't make up for it. And he'll just laugh at you. It's just a throw up. I got a million of them running. So what? He's a jealous toy, that's all. Because he, he can't do a burner and shit. He can't do shit. He can't even do a straight letter. He went over this? Yup, he did a, a cap throw up over me and an MPC over this and wrote war next to Fat Albert. Oh, shit. You, get him, man. you, you can't gotta, never make up for that. You gotta get that nigga on the that, permanent. That's, that's never permanent. forgive action. If you a toy, it gotta be stopped. And this guy's a toy and he's big and he still gotta be stopped. He gotta be stopped. He's got Yo, but how come we waited all this long? How come there's so many writers that he went over their burners and we're not in his neighborhood with crews? Because nobody wants to get united. That's shit. Yeah, that's we it. gotta everybody get together, bro, that's shit. Everybody says, yeah, we're gonna get down, we're gonna get down, right? But nobody comes, man. Yeah. Like, what we got to do is meet everybody in home 49th Street at the bench. It's the like, Grand Concourse. We just forget all our other bullshit worries that we got with each other. Yeah. Unite yeah. and get this toy, because yeah. he's talking everybody. Everybody. Cap, I don't know, some big white boy. I don't know. <laughs> some big white boy. I don't know. I don't want to know. Yeah, that's what he's doing, trying to get attention and revenge, because people go over his throat. You know, people do burners. You see a drop, you're gonna go okay. over it. Who thinks Cap's throw-ups are worth being on a train? Nobody. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody. Nobody. Uh, what'd you write, bro? I write Mayor, man. Mayor. Mayor? Yeah. M-E-A-R? M-A-R-E. M-A-R-E. Yeah. Ma. Mayor. <laughs> Mayor. Uh, Ma is M-A-R. But nah, seriously, you know, you gotta kill them dudes for doing that. Who's Cap? Cap. Cap is right here? Uh, oh, no. People don't know what I look like until now. Until they start going to the movies, they're gonna see my face. Big deal. Anybody tries to screw around with me and my friends, I go over everything they got forever. Everybody from Brooklyn to Manhattan. Everybody. And that's the way it is. Especially with, especially with me. The object is more. Not the biggest and the beautifulest, but more. Like a little piece on every car is what counts. Not one whole car on every 30 cars that goes by. Once you start going over someone, you can't stop. So I'm gonna live. Thus, started pulling some shit with me. And I'm telling you, he's lucky you didn't catch him by that wall. Because if we would have been there, even if you were shooting the movie, it would have just been boom, boom, boom. And that's the way it would have went. He's gonna get crushed off, I guarantee, by tomorrow, once they find out it's here. Help me with the 3D, Nikki. Come on. The piece has got a lot of colors to go in there yet. But with the color, we could do that. We could do that with no problem. I could do it before it gets dark, no problem. Colors, colors, colors! Colors! But that's, that was a beautiful wall. I really like that. People like that, they deserve getting everything they got crossed out. Forever. For the past 20 years, there really hasn't been anything hot. There have been no movements since pop art. Uh, any retailer, and let's face it, the gallery is indeed a retailer. They're always looking for something hot that they can merchandise and, and sell to the public. It's almost as though... Um these pieces were peeled off the train and put onto canvas. So you have the same energy, you have the same coloring, you have the same intensity and the same big piece that you would see on a train. The real subway graffiti that's done on, you know, on the trains is slowly dying out and this is taking its place. The lifespan of, a, of an average piece today only lasts a few months. This is something that could last a lifetime. Blondie seems to be an important figure within the uh, graffiti art style. Kane uh, has used her in a very photographic way. 
not uh, shows her expressionistically. I'm a colorist myself, I'm an artist. And it's exciting, the color is exciting, the movement is exciting, it combines all kinds of movements. We had uh, ABC TV, we had CBS here tonight. You know, we're gonna be on the news tonight at right. 11 o'clock. Uh, National Public Radio. Uh, Do it up, baby. I love it. I'm Ron Powers. I'm a, I'm a reporter with the Associated Press. How long would it take you to do something like this? On the train? Depends on what your schedule is. Like, I can't let my mother know that I'm going to the train, so I have to be back early. <laughs> but I did meet a guy here who's an art critic from the news, and he says he gets so goddamn mad every time he sees this that he walked up to one of the artists at the show tonight and said, how would you feel if I took a can and wrote on your graffiti? And the, the artist said to him, I kill you, man. As an investment, I feel so strongly that if you get in on the bottom of anything, it's got to be a good investment. And this is definitely going someplace. But uh, I think that uh, graffiti on the subway cars were uh, a symbol of uh, New York or uh, foreign people, and especially French people. And uh, I think it's a little uh, sad if uh, graffiti are going to be only on canvas and not anymore on trains. Forget about the trains. Who wants to be dirty and hot at the same time? That's right. I'm into making money. Yeah, it feels good. You go to you go to school and your teacher says it, it's not worth they anything. Don't it. You don't make any money from graffiti, yeah, that's and you tell right, them, boy. when was the last time you made two thousand dollars in a month? Yeah, huh? Like making four and some change. <laughs> and you go, okay, now you failed. <laughs> All right, the thought has crossed my mind. Yeah, if something should happen, yeah, I'll go along with it. But if it doesn't. There's no, no thing to me because that's not what I'm out here for. I'm out here to bomb, period. That's what I started for. I didn't, I didn't start writing to go to Paris. I didn't start writing to do canvases. I started writing to bomb, to destroy all lines. And that's what I'm doing. How long do you think you'll do it? Till I'm finished. Now that you've heard that, you understand what I'm saying to you when I say that I don't understand him. He's out there to bomb, destroy all lines. What are the lines ever done to him? What have the lines ever done to him? Cents. When do you pay 75 cents? Never, but... Well, <laughs> so I don't even know what you're talking about. We're on the Staten Island Ferry. This is the New York Harbor. This is to signify we're leaving New York with uh, this package of artists to go out and play places where individually they never would play. It'll be in uh, Washington, D.C., Pittsburgh, Chicago, Madison, Minneapolis, Iowa City, Detroit, and Toronto. Being professional, what does that mean? Getting paid for what you do. Professional. And having your own style. Yeah. And doing your own moves. Don't let nobody else bite you. Doing it for a long time, knowing what you're doing. Being the best. I think it's about time the politicians came down and looked and saw what is on these trains. It is this water. It should be that way. It should be cleaned, and the ones that are caught should be cleaned. It. They should clean it. The ones that they catch are doing that. What's the sense of paying 75 cents when you have to ride graffiti trains, you know? It gives a terrible impression of the city. And I, if you think the outside is bad, I've been riding them, like I say, for 40 years. The inside is, a, it's just unbelievable. So 
violation of public property. I think it's disgusting. They should at least get somebody to clean up the damn place. We move three and a half million people a day. They have rights to. The people see the outside of the cars uh, when the trains are going, stop pulling to a station or when they're passing on the express track. I mean, it's ge generally a blur. But I don't think the public finds that nearly as intrusive and ugly as they do the inside graffiti. He hates yeah. the insides. He hates the insides. Yeah. He said there's, there's any possible way of we giving him some kind of suggestion of how to get rid of the inside. He said there might be a chance of negotiating Negoti with the outside. <laughs> negotiating. Yeah. Oh, Something like that. I met uh, with a group of them one day. Uh, more out of intellectual curiosity as to who they were and what made them tick. I found them surprisingly articulate. They, they expressed a, uh, a strong sense that uh, uh, if their outside paintings were uh, left untouched, uh, that the public would be uh, impressed. We came up to them with like a proposal to paint 10 cars inside yes. and out and let it run in like the major stations. And let people vote on it, like let's say during a two week period, and after the two week period they'll have, you know, the, the results in the paper. And um, I think the MTA will be embarrassed. I thought there was no basis whatsoever in which it was proper uh, for anyone to uh, touch our property in an unauthorized fashion. They got guys out there that are mugging people in the subways Stabbing people, throwing people into a track and all There's that. Right and they're wasting their bullshit money trying to get us. With all respect, I think you are close to falling into the sort of trap of the 1960s culture, which says, uh, you know, this society has left these kids uh, with not enough to do. If the kids have energy and want to do something, we'll give, we'll give them all brooms, we'll give them all sponges, and they could do something that is publicly productive, useful, and that would earn for them the respect and approbation from their fellow citizens. It isn't the energy that is misplaced, it's the value system that is misplaced. for the riding public to be up on the station one cold and dreary day to see a nice white shiny car come pulling up to the station the public has knocked us for so long and we are doing nothing we couldn't be done we proved that we've done it we painted 409 cars in approximately eight weeks 24 hours a day seven days a week and not one day did we miss that production schedule our personal pride was hurt a lot of people have been knocking the transit authority and we wanted to show them that we could do something. See, if the Japanese can do it, we can do it. The stuff is like razor blades, about two inches long, and there's one of these every two inches. There's really not too much protective clothing you can wear to prevent yourself from getting cut. And once you do fall into it, it's so structured that it collapses upon you and the more you try to move, the worse off you become. And just like, you know, when you see in the movies, like in Apocalypse Now, how they used to protect their lines and their barricades. Yeah, they want to hold back the enemy from destroying our train. About three years ago, I decided uh, to uh, suggest uh, to uh, Dick Ravitch uh, that they put a um, dog in the yard to uh, keep the graffiti vandals out. 
the uh, MTA uh, rejected it, and they said, uh, no, uh, that if you put a dog in the yards, the dog would step on the third rail. Now, I don't happen to think that dogs step on the third rail, but I said uh, in response to that, uh, well, if you think the dog will step on the third rail, then build two fences and have the dog run between the two fences, and that will keep uh, people out and protect the dog from stepping on the third rail. And uh, the response uh, was, well, maybe somebody will climb over the fence and uh, the dog will bite them. I said, well, I thought that's what the dog was for. But if you're afraid of uh, having the dog bite such a vandal, and here I called upon my uh, prodigious memory, uh, I said, uh, what you should do then, instead of using a dog, is to use a wolf and have a wolf run between the two fences because there is no uh, recorded uh, case in history uh, where a wolf has ever attacked a human being unless the wolf were rabid, mad. Now, as a result of telling that story innumerable times, I embarrassed the MTA into building the fence uh, around uh, the first of 19 yards. And it was so successful, they now claim it as their own idea and they're uh, building uh, 18 more fences. I think it's stupid. The idea of having all this barbed wire and fences and protection, trains are still gonna get written on it. They invented the white elephant. It's still, it's still got, well, they weren't bombed, but they had little mosquito bites. I mean, call it what you want. They were, they were still written on. They're still not spotless completely. Dump Koch. Yeah, there you go. That is the highest praise imaginable because uh, obviously I'm getting to them. There always will be graffiti. It's a part of New York. It'll be there forever. Someone will always want to jump down on a track or while the train's moving and just take out a can of paint or a marker and put up their initial. He still shows me all his things, which I don't even want to see. But we still talk. And he tells me just about everything that goes on. Other than that, I wouldn't really be able to tell you so much. And like sometimes, and this is, and knowing all this, right, it just really only makes me that much more fearful for him. I felt that I just had to let him know, you know, like, because sometimes when it's time to go bombing, you know, you got to go late at night, like in the middle of the night, you got to leave the house at 2 o'clock just to go bombing so you don't get caught. You know, she got to know where I'm going. Can't just say I'm going to a party. No parties don't start at 2 o'clock. Not every kid would tell his mother where to go. Yeah, well, I'd rather let my mother know what's going on, you know, than to keep on the dark. If I get busted, cops call, excuse me, we have your son for graffiti. You know, I'd rather, you know, let her know that I was doing it. So, you know, she's prepared to come and get me up. But never getting busted, so don't have to worry about that. I mean, an adult, I, can, I just couldn't see an adult ever, like, putting that much energy to something that isn't going to pay or is going to risk their life or have, like, possibilities of them getting arrested. Well, I see myself as eventually growing out of graph and getting married and living the lifestyle, you know, and making good money like that. And when, when life is in its best, you don't really want to run around in the trains. I'm sure I'll come back every now and then just to let people know I'm still around. Oh, no, when I come back, I take over, and that's it, after that. And after that, you are after the that. The six. I'm king right here. <laughs> I'm the prince of the six. After that. He's later, you know, he's really the has-been. I, I, I'm what they call a has-been, and he's a wannabe. A wannabe. <laughs> they consider you a king? Put it this way, I am a king. I can king say, of what? I want to tell you, I am a king of bombing. You got to be able to take over a line with insides, take it over with throw-ups, top to bottoms. You got to do everything, you know, if you special, specialize in one thing, 
You know, you really can't call yourself an all-out king. Who's king? You looking at him right here, my brother, the original. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Kingdom Islam, nation God, for I'm the one that's rocked so far, you know what I'm saying? Always Ow. rocking the jazzy's car deck, you know what I'm saying? The only and the original magnetic king, and that's the one that's still sitting here doing his thing. My name's still I travel for the baby. <laughs> you know it, tell him we all live. This is the original old master killer of the Manila Thriller right here that you're looking at. The original <laughs> king and loves to do his thing. Don't shout, don't run, don't hide, don't sky. This is me coming to you natural and live on CB. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> be without the mic. <laughs> Education is a big disgrace, and so you might as well work at the sanitation. 